G'day, welcome back to the channel. Some drone news, and look at this, the ultimate FPV. Just this week, the DART mission flew FPV straight into an asteroid. Well, it wasn't actually FPV because this was automated. The system had, or the craft had onboard guidance, and it basically flew itself straight into a big lump of space rock way out miles from anywhere. This was a Bruce Willis moment. In fact, Bruce Willis was asked to comment and he said, I'm lost for words. But look at that. Fantastic. Look at uh, that's just a regular landing for me. I don't see why they're all so amazed. That's that, you know, it, all my landings look like that when I'm flying FPV. But yeah, so that's just something I thought people might like to see. What else have I got here today to talk to you about? Oh, yeah, the Lilium jet. Now, this is one of these um, AAM, what is it? Advanced Air Mobility Craft. Vertical takeoff, it's going to be, it's electrically powered. Look at all the EDFs. Let me just go to full screen on this so you can see it a bit better. Look at all the EDFs stuck in the, this is a canard craft, so it means it has a little wing out the front and a big wing out the back. And look, at one, two, three, four, five, six on that side, six on the other side, 12 EDFs. This is just on the front wing alone. And the thing that amazes me, look at the speed here. We've got 169 kilometers an hour. That's over 100 miles an hour. And you watch, they've got these little tufts of fabric here, little strings on the top of the uh, engine nacelles. And you'll notice that this is stalled. Now, the reason, if this was not unstalled, all the string would be sort of pointing backwards. It would be blown backwards by the, the smooth flow of air over that top surface. But if I just make this play, you watch what happens to the string. Here we go. Look at it. It's completely stalled at 179 kilometers an hour. Now, on the main wing here, this is the main wing, you can see this is what you would expect. These strings are all flowing backwards because there's a, a lamina, a smooth flow over the wing and the nacelles. And how many have we got here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 engines on that side, 12 or EDFs, 12 EDFs on the other. Um, this is an amazing number of EDFs. So many things to go wrong, you might say. But uh, And also, what about the noise? EDFs are not the quietest things in the world. The newer ones with the high blade count, they're a bit quieter, but if you're going to move that much air, it becomes very, very noisy. And the thing that concerns me is, would this glide? Would this thing even glide? Let's just watch a bit more of the footage. You can see the whole surface, including the, the fans, moves to provide control. And here we go again. What are we up to? 169 kilometers an hour. Totally stalled airflow over that front canard, which means it's basically just using the thrust of the motors to control the pitch. Because once the wing stalls, it provides mainly drag, not lift. Um, Let's look a bit further and see what we see. At some stage, it does become unstalled, but notice, and look, it's flying fast. That front canard, the nacelle is, is stalled. That's got to be a huge amount of drag, and that means it's not efficient. It can't be efficient with that amount of drag. And see, even up here, it's still stalled in this turn. So, so really, what's holding the nose up is these EDFs, which means most of their energy is basically being used directly to provide lift rather than forward flight. It is it just beggars belief. Now, these people are talking about running air taxi services with this thing, but uh, what happens if the motors stop? What happens if there's a major power failure? This thing wouldn't glide worth, worth anything. It, it would be a brick. And of course, uh, the, the flying speed, 180 kilometers an hour, you can't glide into a VTOL landing area at 180 kilometers an hour. It's just not going to work. And again, still stalled on the main, look, still stalled, and they're lowering the angle now but 178 kilometers an hour, and, and it was still stalled. This is crazy. This is crazy stuff. This is why these, these electric air taxis, they're just, they're not going to work. And I'm doing a whole video on this, which is almost finished, which I talk about the, the folly of these electric air taxis. It is so many people throwing their money down the toilet. If you want to throw your money away, throw it away at me. At least I'll send you a thank you email. You're not going to get one from these people. Absolutely gobsmacking. Um, and there's more to come on that as I'm working on a, a video on that. Another thing I spotted was this um, out of Ireland. We are this is this is the uh, Mana Aero. Now they run a drone delivery service. Apparently, it's quite quite widely used and it's quite successful in Ireland. But remember, these things are all being trialed. They're not commercially viable entities, as far as I am aware. They're saying we're delighted to have partnered with Mana Aero for the first drone delivery of FIFA 23 in the world. So <laughs> let's have a look here. What they're doing is GameStop is delivering software by drone. Is that the stupidest thing you've ever heard of? The one thing that can be delivered over the internet is software. So why would you waste resources, waste money, waste time delivering it with a drone? It makes no sense. This is what the internet is for. Like this massive great drone here. They throw this little thing inside. Away it goes. Why wouldn't you just log on and download? 
or use Steam or something. I mean, this, no, this is a solution looking for a problem and it lowers this down. There we go. Oh, fantastic. How did the string get detached? Maybe it's got a little hook. I don't know. But there you go. That was, uh, yeah, delivering software by drone has got to be the stupidest thing in the entire world. It's a solution looking for a problem. This shows you the total folly of this whole drone delivery thing. It's absolute rubbish. But finally, to close out today's news, I want to talk about Google Wing. Now, they've been running an operation in Australia and delivering stuff, cups of coffee and chickens and all sorts of things. And they've been claiming success. You know, so many huge numbers of drone deliveries done all without problems. Well, no, they've been attacked by magpies. I think at one stage, a young boy reeled one in with a surf casting rod. Um, they, they keep the... The, the failures to a minimum. I think someone said that they had a Wing drone crash in their garden and Wing uh, hushed it up. Wing told them or paid them money. This is just what I've heard, just allegedly. I paid them money not to tell people about it. So there have been a few failures, but nothing that goes quite as far as this one. In Queensland, Browns Bay planes without electricity after drone food delivery crashes onto power lines. Look at this. Um, Let's get rid of the cookie demand. I don't care about that. Thousands of people were left without power after a food delivery drone crashed into power lines yesterday in what's been, been described as a first by Energex. That's the electricity company. Um, and apparently over 2,000 customers or 2,000 customers were, <laughs> were inconvenienced by this. It was carrying food. And of course, we don't care if 2,000 people lose their power. The, the, the roast chicken must get through. <laughs> <And> <laughs> Apparently, Google is saying that it, it, it was a uh, it was a, a emergency landing or something. What did they say? It's down here somewhere. Hang on a minute. Yeah, a spokesperson for Wing, the company that operates the drone delivery, said a drone made a precautionary controlled landing yesterday and came to rest on an overhead power line. Well, I don't think if it landed on power lines, it wasn't very controlled, was it? Because if you had control, you would not choose to land on a power line and inconvenience 2,000 people by having to have their power cut off while a drone was recovered. Also, if this was a, a just some a regular Joe Public who landed their drone on the power line, I think the authorities would be baying for blood. They'd be calling for heads to roll, but it was Google, and Google have got lots of money, so they don't really care. Google do, can do whatever the hell it likes because it lines the pockets of politicians and bureaucrats and regulators to the extent that, well, they get their get-out-of-jail-free card. But this is, again, the, the total folly of drone delivery. You're going to inconvenience thousands of people so that someone can get a hot cup of coffee or or a chicken or some kind of fast food delivered by drone. It's just not going to work. And the other thing that, that is, is important, I'm going to mention this in my video about how drone delivery is never going to fly. Um, why did it have to make a precautionary landing? Did it lose GPS lock or something? Because oh, I have to wonder if our skies were ever filled with drones, including these electric pilotless air taxis, what happens if the GPS system somehow fails? If there's a, a, a solar flare, a coronal discharge, and it, it creates so much noise in the ionosphere that the GPS signal is overwhelmed by all the noise, what do these craft do? They don't know where they are. They don't know how to get where they're going. Will they perform these controlled landings into power lines? Now, if this had been a, an air taxi with people in it, those power lines wouldn't have supported it. It would have fallen to the ground, and the power lines would have fallen on top of it. Anyone inside could well have been killed. Is that an acceptable level of risk? I don't know. Remember that anyone with a GPS jammer from Banggood or some other Chinese thing can disrupt GPS signals for many kilometres around where they are. And if the drones are flying overhead, what are they going to do? There are so many avenues for failure with this whole concept of, of um, advanced air mobility and drone delivery. Really, nobody's thinking this through, except perhaps me. And my video will explain why I think this is all rubbish. Anyway, that's, a, that's some news I thought you might like to see. Um, yeah, interesting times in the world of drones. And if you're flying FPV, watch out for those asteroids. And uh, watch out for a video too, where I'm talking about FPV's dirty little secret. The secret that nobody talks about, but everybody does. Stay tuned for that one. In the meantime, thank you to my Patreon supporters. You make it possible for me to make these videos. And I thank you so much for doing so. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.